Hey friends, welcome back to another weekly energy video. My name is Grace. Um, on this channel, I'm talking about the weekly astrology. I'm doing a tarot card reading for the collective. You can anticipate though, I am going to start doing zodiac readings. I'm starting with all the cardinal signs. That's Capricorn, Cancer, Aries, and Libra. Uh, we're just going to start with those for now. Uh, if you don't see your sign and you really want to see your sign, just leave me a comment. But as of right now, I'm just responding to... Um, a specific request as well as growing the channel incrementally uh, so that it makes sense. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, I definitely did and am having a good weekend. I'm recording this over the weekend. Um, let's talk about what's going on. So uh, Sunday the 13th, is that correct? Sunday the 13th, Sun is direct Venus. This is going to be the largest transit Um Aside from the new moon that's coming up this week, this is called a Kazemi when a planet is conjunct with the sun. And the sun expands, it illuminates things. Venus has been in retrograde. We are in the middle of Leo season. Right, so Venus is in retrograde in Leo and we are in the middle of Leo season. So a lot of lessons around Leo. Leo ruling the fifth house of love, joy, creativity, our inner child. Mm, romance, things like this. And Libra is, is popping up into my head very loudly at this moment. I don't know why Libra is here. Oh, well, the moon will be in Libra, looks like, this coming weekend. So maybe we'll talk about uh, this upcoming weekend uh, by the end of this reading. It'll come up. But also our south node, um, our, if you remember this month, earlier this month, the nodal shifts moved. There was a nodal shift and the, the nodal points moved from Taurus Scorpio axis to um, Libra Aries. So North node Aries, South node Libra. The nodes always move in retrograde. The nodes are mathematical points, they're karmic points. I cover this in a, in a previous video, but since I'm not doing videos based on subjects alone, but rather weekly energies, I'm really actually not sure where it is. So. The nodal shifts are karmic points. Libra is feeling like it's showing up for me here. Libra rules the seventh house of relationships as well. So going back to Sunday, the 13th, with this Venus Kazemi, has it become clear to you what this Venus retrograde wants to show you? Has something that has been hidden become clear? You know, Venus as a planet, has a cycle. Galileo actually proved Copernicus's theory that we live in a heliocentric universe, as in that the planets, including our own planet Earth, revolves around the sun by studying the planet Venus and that it at some point disappears behind the sun and then comes back around. He observed Venus and proved that theory. And so... A couple of lessons I actually take away from this. One, aside from, okay, Venus having this cycle and Venus beginning a new cycle, how are you yourself new? How are you becoming new? How are you honoring that by also honoring past versions of yourself? As well as, the so the lesson in that, little, in that story though is how do our perceptions shape who we are? This is a little scientific story, right? Like as in, Ven even before we perceived Venus having its cycle, moving behind the sun and like enlarging and appearing larger or smaller, it was probably always doing that, right? In a similar way, we may not see always the parts of us that are there and unacknowledged until some time has passed or we grow or we develop into that version of ourselves. That version that was always there. The metaphor of the seed comes to mind where it's like the plan for, for every, everything, the, the plan for unfolding and the plan for growth and all of your potential is already contained within you. <sighs> okay, let's talk about astrology though. I talked a little bit about this last week, Venus trine Chiron. Chiron is the wounded healer. 
The wound is part of the attraction, confidence, self-love, appreciation. Those are just themes. But with Venus trying Chiron, I want to point out that part of what it may be illuminated to us, for us, is that maybe for some time we have been attracted to or attached to things that aren't exactly healthy for us. We are seeing our relationship to our wounds. Okay, Chiron is the wounded healer. Sun square Uranus. Um, I was told that this is a transit where we should pay attention to world events. So I'm just going to put that out there. Surprising events, essentially. Sun square Uranus. On a more microcosm level of like the personal self, right? And on the theme of personal evolution, um, and renewal, this speaks like surprising yourself, surprising as to what is contained within you, um, parts of your personality, for example, um, coming to light. And then, of course, we have the new moon in Leo. It's in 23 degrees. Check it out in your chart. Which house does Leo rule for you? Is it aspecting any of the other planets? Those are activated at this time. At the same time, Mars is trying Uranus. There's Uranus again. We've got double Uranus transits with the Sun and with Mars back to back. There's a lot more happening, but let me just take a deep breath because a lot of energy, I think, is going to be released during this new moon in Leo. A lot. So how can we prepare? I, you know, for me, a big theme in my life has been Honoring the Divine Feminine, awakening your Shakti, the Divine Feminine Kundalini, that's in all of us. And for me, and in general, I think, part of the Divine Feminine is living with passion. Leo is so passionate. Leo takes the stage. Leo is like, look at me, and this is me. Um, and this is the kind of energy that's being called, I think, within all of us in order to unite us. Leo's opposite is Aquarius. It's the, it's the sign of brotherhood and togetherness. So in some ways, this new moon in Leo, six months from now, it will be Aquarius season, will be in the full moon in Leo. Set an intention now for how you will step into your own gifts in a way that supports the greater whole. Where was I just reading this? I don't know. I don't know anymore. I feel like I've been reading so much that I have lots of pieces of things that are coming together, but don't totally make sense to me. But I hope that some of this resonates for you and this week. And let's get into our tarot reading. Oh, but before we do, a couple of announcements. One, I received a gift from a very dedicated viewer, a loyal listener. It is a little pocket labradorite stone. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the other announcement is I'm working on an event series. If you're in Chicago, uh, you might be interested in this. It's going to be a six-week course. It's in collaboration with um, another person named Jen, who is a life coach. She's the owner and founder of what's called A Life All In. We're partnering together to bring you some of my modalities in tarot, astrology, and energy work um, to do a transformative, to host a transformative in-person experience. We can also do virtual to accommodate people, um, just so you are aware. And it will culminate on the full moon eclipse in Libra. There is Libra again, the full moon eclipse in Libra. Since the sh nodes have shifted, this year is a bit of a transitionary year where we see, so depending on where the nodes are, that's where we see our eclipses. Have you noticed that? So for the last year and a half, we've seen the eclipses primarily in, in Taurus and Scorpio. This eclipse season is Mar uh, in the spring and in the fall. This year we have our full moon eclipse in Libra, but then the new moon eclipse in 
Scorpio. But next year, that's going to shift. New moon eclipse, uh, or vice versa. Um, I may have misspoken there, but I think you get the idea, right? So that is that. Oh, uh, speaking of the divine feminine and goddess energy, the last transit actually I need to point out is that the new moon is also conjunct Venus, conjunct Lilith. Lilith is a feminine, dark energy. It is everything that is repressed. We are releasing everything, bringing, bringing parts of ourselves out from the shadows and into our loving awareness. I'm going to read from this. Um, I forgot which site I got it from. I think it was astrobutterfly.com. She writes, this transit, the voices of three feminine archetypes. It says, this is me. This is what I want. We are ready to break free from society's norms and adapt our own code of conduct that is true to us. Writing a new narrative. That's pretty powerful stuff. It's good stuff. So how are you being new? All right, I think y'all liked the... Um... Oh. Um animal spirit guide so i pulled another one for us here it is the walrus will it focus it says remain vigilant about the current situation pay attention to signs and omens and let them dictate your choices i don't know about you but my life right now in the past week especially has been incredibly synchronistic i'm getting a lot of intuitive hits i think that's why spirit took a job away from me seriously I was gonna have this great editing job that was going to take up a lot of my time this month. And I thought I'd be just busy the whole month of August. Turns out that's not the case. And so in the meantime, I have um, been finding more time and receiving a lot of messages and just intuitively, instinctually, spontaneously, you know, going to do one activity or visit this place and it's working for me so learn how to tap into that intuitive voice that you have of yours of course this channel is called the intuitive lens so everything that i'm going to be um, doing here and teaching you is going to support that now we have the wisdom of the oracle mm -hmm. here and now here and now it almost wanted to come out reverse this is about being present. This is about not taking things for granted. Breathing. I think, you know, in the reverse, it almost feels like, <laughs> it's kind of like what I was saying, like making plans, make plans, God laughs. She has a little sign that says, oh, it says you are here, but I thought it said you are free. You are free to be here. Thank you for being here, for sticking around, watching the channel. A never-ending story. Um, you know what this vibe's like? It's like saying, you know, when you feel anxiety or discomfort, those are telling you something. Our inability to be here and now is numbing. We're, we numb things out because we're either ruminating about the past or concerned for the future and we tell ourselves stories where we tell ourselves stories that re, that reinforce either histories or reinforce future outcomes instead of remaining open open the walrus is saying remain open and vigilant about the current situation pay attention to signs and omens this is about openness receptivity um, not allowing preconditioned thoughts or beliefs to guide your path during this specific time because this is a time for manifestation. It feels pretty cliche to say, even as I say it out loud, but I'm just saying, oh boy, cards are jumping. Um, Ten of Wands, burdened. What are you burdened with? Are you doing too much? You might need to put some things down so that you can listen. Yep, look at that, doing too much. 10 of, sorry, Knight of Pentacles in reverse, that's work without reward. 
that's like, you know, wanting to do things in order to be stable, but you're not actually going anywhere. Strength is here. That's Leo showing up. Leo is a card that tells us to have faith in our path. She's extremely brave, right? Putting her hands in the lion's mouth. This is a reminder that you are incredibly powerful. Your body, your mind is so powerful. You're able to manifest anything that you desire. Uh, the Two of Cups. This is about authenticity. Be real with yourself. Oftentimes, this is a card of love as well. We'll see if love comes up or if there's a person coming in um, as a message for somebody. Um, but based on what I've seen so far, um, Walrus is saying be vigilant about a situation. So either you're, whether you're dealing with somebody, it's saying pay attention to the signs. Don't overlook any red flags. Remember the, the cycle of Venus retrograde can bring people back into your life. And it's our job to vet them properly. Do you want to bring people back into your life that aren't contributing to your spiritual path or to your development? Whatever that means for you, wherever you are. Um, I also, you know, angel protection. I always love to see that. And with, with the way that the reading is now, I feel like there, there is a level of authenticity required even of yourself. Admit it to yourself first. And then, you know, this card suggests sort of there's like a mirroring going on. As long as you are true to yourself and act in accordance with your higher truth, I think the right people show up. I think the people who mirror your energy show up. So what is your current experience? Are you... Do you have people in your life that make you doubt or question your abilities? or what you're capable of doing, or what you deserve. Uh-uh. That's too much. Okay. <clears throat> uh-uh. That's too much. Yeah, you know. Send them love. Send them love. We'll do a quick release, energetic release ritual at the end of this video, okay? Maybe that's something new we can do together. Who's that? Okay. Eight of Swords wanted to come out. Remember, this has been showing up the last few weeks. Um, this is a sign, an omen, that we are coming out of a period of time when our minds were limiting us. I mean, likely, good thing for us that you're watching these videos because you understand how to interpret signs that say, hey, maybe your mind is playing tricks on you right now. Hey, maybe your mind is keeping you small when really you should be moving beyond these limitations that you're setting on yourself. Eight of Wands underneath. Thank you. Thank you to my spirit guides for sending me messages. We have now in our spread on the table, my three by three is the four of wands, three of pentacles, six of wands, four of cups in reverse, the devil in reverse. Love that. King of wands in reverse. Yes. Wheel of fortune in reverse, the page of cups, and the queen of swords in reverse. You are getting free. Devil in reverse. Devil represents the things that bind us. This could be our addictions. It could be our mental health, how we take care of our body. This is anything that can be toxic is embodied by the devil. In the reverse here and given the rest of the reading, I think this is saying we're becoming free of that. How we're doing that is we're literally saying no to people who have influenced us negatively. Look, four of cups, king of wands. Now, king of wands does it is considered like the husband of the tarot. So for those of you that resonate with this message, I feel like if you're dealing with a like a toxic partner or ex-partner, um, if you're if you're trying to like create space between you and this person because of how their inner energy affects you, then this is definitely what's showing up here. This has been, you know, it's showing up as like in the past that this was probably like for a reason, um, ace of, 
not ace, sorry, the Wheel of Fortune is, is showing here. This is about divine timing and things appearing on your path for a purpose or a reason. I feel like in the past, this person was somebody you were committed to, the Four of, four of Wands. This is a card of commitment, joy. It wasn't always that this is this was a bad relationship, but now it's more so showing that. I think that this was a relationship that showed you about maybe the, the it was here for a reason, and the lesson might have been something about your self worth. Right, three of pentacles. Maybe you grew alongside this person for some time. Three of pentacles. Six of wands. Victory. You d did build something together. It was probably beautiful. Mm. I think that this victory is also showing overcoming. This feels like mentally, mentally, emotionally maturing a bit. Like when we sometimes we know things are bad for us and we're still not really able to break free from that and. I'm not at this time really talking about like abusive, like forceful abusive relationships that are impossible to leave. I think, you know, everyone has had their own journey with things like that. And I can't speak to things that I haven't experienced. But on some level, like situations where even we know it's bad for us and we consciously choose to do it or pursue it. This is that energy of the devil, that addiction, that like returning to something that no longer serves us. The page of cups here is an omen to say, you know, look beyond what's on the surface. The page of cups is sort of that immature energy too. It's showing up as like this young thing, you know, like when we were young, we made decisions a certain way because maybe it did satisfy our ego. Part of overcoming this this personal evolution that's showing up this week is about overcoming that that emotional maturity that says, "I know this is bad for me, and actually, I love myself so much. What I what I know that what I need right now is not what this person can offer. I don't know that this is a new person. To be honest, this isn't showing up here. I feel like this is stories that you tell yourself about other people and how you relate to them." Okay, Queen of Swords is here in the reverse position. She's cool, she's calm, she's calculated. She's like the business lady. It's all business, you know. At some point in this relationship or in, in these relationships, it's gotten so bad that I feel that you are no longer emotionally invested. You have pulled out the hooks that um, keep you returning. And now it is kind of like cold, hard bitch style. Sorry, <laughs> excuse my language. I don't think YouTube cares. Anyway, it's all business now. It's like things are going to start being way more direct. I think that this person is going to feel you disengaging. And the victory card is here, the six of wands. This is you're acknowledging yourself. Other people are going to be aware of how your energy is shifting and changing here as well. So let's just get a, what do I want to do? No more cards, no more cards. Let's just do a really quick energetic release. So I invite you to close your eyes. We're going to do a really quick energetic practice to release this person or people, situations or things that have previously bound us. And the way we're going to release them is to hold these images in your mind of this person, place or thing or group of people. And you're going to bring it into your loving awareness to say, thank you so much for the lessons. Thank you so much for being in my life in a time when I needed you and I release you with love. Grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. 
There's a recommended listening below for a song to vibe out to if that's your thing. Otherwise, I'll see you all next week. Uh, drop a comment. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Like the channel or like the video. It helps a lot in spreading the word around. All right. Love you guys so much.